uh, am I afraid of dying? No. No. So. Um, I've seen firsthand the evil in some people. You know, if we decide to, you know, destroy um, each other, then, you know, I don't think God, he's going to stop us from doing that. There will be an increase in violence before there's peace, if there ever can be peace. This is some of the best and the worst years of my life, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for a thing. There's nobody lives in the town. Uh, it's deserted, and it's been that way for a couple of years now. So they all moved out. They all fled to the south uh, and other places because of the heavy fighting of the Taliban. The city of Nauzad is creepy because there's nobody that lives in it, and it, it is a fairly uh, large-sized city. And uh, it, I mean, it is really creepy. You're walking and the wind blows and the door creaks open. And you're wondering if somebody's behind it. Um, it's, it's definitely a, a creepy feeling. Uh, that only those that have been there can uh, understand what, it, what it's like. Yeah, we've had uh, we've had a couple of Marines say they they've seen a ghost. Uh, even some of the Marines on post have uh, commented about seeing something walking around. There's a graveyard nearby, and they claim to see somebody walking in the graveyard, but you know, there's n never anything there. It's pretty pretty heavily uh, mined in this area. The way I figure it's a 50-50 chance that next footstep could be the last footstep you make. But you have to make it in order to, you know, get the job done that we're here to do. Uh, the enemy here has uh, a pretty, pretty good stronghold of the area at about 360 degrees around us. They have uh, prepared defensive positions, bunkers. Uh, they have a hasty minefield with pressure plate IEDs. They have uh, a lot of weapon systems that we haven't gone against in a while. The Taliban here, um, you know, they, they've got some pretty good intelligence. They actually have, um, you know, there's a forward line of enemy troops. I was really surprised to see how well organized um, the, the actual Taliban was. They have a uh, chain of command just like we have. They have leaders. They request permission uh, to attack just like we do from our hire. Two more! Go! 
they're well trained. They're not uh, they're not your ordinary uh, insurgency. This is they're well trained and they're disciplined. Two more. Go ahead. Hey, three oh. more. They know what they're doing. Um, I, you know, I don't want to give them too much credit, but uh, you know, they're they are uh, they are smart. Two bodies on the opposite side. Long walls. And keep right on there, Weber. And uh, they know when to attack and when not to attack, and they do it with uh, with actual thought. So it's not just um, some guy getting paid to go shoot us up. Two more. Let's go. Like World War II style, fighting house to house with the enemy. Um, street, a lot of street fighting. They, they surprise you. I mean, they're in positions and tun come out of tunnels, and I mean, they got a ground network here that's crazy. Got here. Uh, nice one, Gunny. Work. Going down long alleys, you know, long axes that are uh, that are dangerous, you know, for the enemy if they want to set up an ambush. It's at any at any corner, any any place that you step, there could be an ambush waiting for you and uh, coming from one of these small holes. If you if you take the if you take them for granted, I mean that you will get you know hurt, killed, or so it, it's it's pretty intense. It's not like um, you know Iraq or anything like that. Uh, in Iraq, it was you know they hit you and run, and here they will actually stay here and fight you. And it's definitely a lot different than uh, the war in Iraq. Where are they firing at? You know, people join the Marine Corps for a variety of reasons, but uh, most of them don't join the Marine Corps to, uh, to make friends. You know, we, we love to fight and we like to take it to the enemy and, uh, and uh, show them that, uh, you know, they're messing with the wrong people. It's amazing how, how uh, something so dangerous can bring such life to uh, Marines and they just act like little kids again. It's, uh, it is truly amazing. 50 meters to our fucking 7 o'clock! 50 meters, 7 o'clock of us! Come stop for a second. Do I? You push over. Push over. Let me in. Is is definitely an adrenaline rush. Um. Shit. It's the biggest adrenaline rush a person can have, and being an adrenaline junkie, I, don't know, I find it. Uh, I find myself very, very calm in the situations that are put in front of me. So. Yeah. Turn the Vic North. Angle the Vic North. Yep. You know your blood gets pumping and flowing. Um, you know it, it's just like your your mind. You know, opens up and you're more aware of your surroundings and things around you. And so your, you know, your senses are, are just running wild. And so 
every you know you're looking at everything you're listening to everything and the adrenaline rushes i mean it's just it's huge it just dumps into you and it, you feel almost invincible get that gun up clark you know when when you see those rpgs coming at you um you know just all your training kicks in I got him. See the window right there? Need, it I came from the top of the roof. Yeah. Right there. Shit, the fire from the window. When we get word that uh, we're pushing further in and we know that that's where the enemy's at, I mean, you see it in Marines' face. It's like uh, kids on Christmas getting their first gift. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got him stirring now. Yeah, we're still here. That some people look, I think, back in the United States would be like, oh my God, these guys are crazy. Oh, yeah. Is that where we're getting the fucking shot from? And then when the firefight dies down, it, uh, you just, your body is so worn out. I think I got that motherfucker too. Let's see him get back up. Oh. Oh. The tree, if we turn around, the main gauges. Yeah. You go from just extreme adrenaline to nothing going on, and it, uh, from my experience, you get tired uh, just once all that adrenaline leaves your body. But uh, you have to be ready to just reamp right back up again. You know, if you, you just got to keep your uh, keep your mind in the right spot. Don't let it, uh, the fatigue overcome uh, your your mindset, and you'd be, you'd be surprised how how long you can go with uh, uh, do, doing your job and having fun doing it. You know, when you're pulling the trigger, you're thinking, you know, um, you know that you're you're getting well-aimed shots. You're hoping that, you know, this is the shot that's going to take that that bad guy out. Um, and you know, sometimes you're able to get them. Sometimes, you know, uh, they move before you can pull the trigger. But uh, you know, like we have to. One thing we have to do is we have to make sure that we have positive ID uh, of the enemy um, because we don't want to have any civilian casualties. And so that's the tough thing is, is making sure, you know, you got the right guy. It, the, the, the emotions that you uh, experience uh, vary greatly. Pretty much it's a kill or be killed mentality. You either need to take him out before he takes one of your buddies out. So it's just, I guess, whoever can do it faster. Um, but uh, uh, Marines love getting shot at because it means that we get to come back and uh, we get to hammer someone, uh, kill the Taliban. So we're more than happy when the Taliban wants to engage us because we're just gonna, we're gonna kill them. Every time we leave the wire, and uh, I've told all the guys that are in my charge, uh, every time you leave the wire, it might be the last time. And if you're able to actually think that, you'll be able to do your job so much more better. When you're out there on the ground, you dismount from a vehicle, uh, it's definitely uh, a little bit nerve wracking because you never know which step could potentially be your last. Try to follow on the tracks. Just so, uh, 
The whole bang was or what? Yeah, it's Is that a hole? Right before I go on patrol, you know, I I think about my uh, my family and my kids. Um, the thing I tell myself is, uh, you know, I, I'm doing this for my kids. One, two, three. There's a little bit of excitement, and then there's also you know, the nervousness, uh, you know, not what, what's out there waiting for you. Let's move it anyway. Time. <clears throat> then if you're worried about it and if you got things in your, in your head that shouldn't be there when you leave the wire, then, you know, there's a good chance that you're going to either get killed or get somebody else killed. We uh, pushed way up north into the enemy territory. Um, we'd actually been further than anybody had been before. Um, we actually worked our way in behind them. So kind of a superstition, not a superstition, but um, I'm a fairly religious person. Uh, I carry this medallion that uh, my grandma and aunt gave me. Uh, it's a St. Michael medallion. It says, protect us in battle. Uh, so I, I wear that, and uh, I usually, uh, I'll say a prayer before going on a, on a patrol just for uh, our safety. Yeah, that hit would have set off anything anyway. Okay. Me, and, me and a friend of mine were, were pretty lucky that we actually came back because we, uh, we got peppered pretty good on the side of a wall. Uh, by some machine gun fire and it's right over there there's openings in the windows gunner you good you need to come back over we're gonna cover you on three one two three as soon as he popped around that corner um you know, i could see his face i see the weapon pointed directly at me and uh when he fired that burst it just you know, it went right past me, and uh, go, 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 go. 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 we need to get out. When we when we look back on it, I mean, they were close. They were really close, and I I I had never been that close to the uh, enemy before. Cover him. I got to say that, you know, the situations that I've been in, there's, you know, there's no other way. Uh, I don't think I could have made it out unless it was, you know, God's hand on me. It's when, it's when everything dies down and you know that you're back for, for good is when everything starts to come back up and it's like, wow. That if you know if a few of those rounds were just a little closer, things could have been real bad. But uh, in the heat of the moment, you know you don't think about it. You, you kind of almost have a sense of humor about it. Like, look at your buddy and say, oh, "Did you see that?" You know, and <laughs> but it, it's fun. So. Since we've been in Nalzad, there's been uh, an increase in violence since we've been here. But that's just due to the way that our company has uh, has taken on the mission and and, uh, and how we have interpreted it to to best uh, to best meet the needs of the Afghan people and to kill the Taliban. So, there will be an increase in violence before there's peace, if there ever can be peace. I took a fucking round with a helmet too. I passed my arm. Yeah, and grazed my fucking helmet. Everybody okay? Yeah, I think